Today, when we generally think of a galaxy, we kind of imagine something that looks like this. A structure that's mostly composed of stars that are visible to us and that generally produce quite a lot of light that's then visible from very far away distances. With a classical image of the Milky Way being something like this as well. And then from the side, it would maybe resemble something like this. Although today we know that it's generally also kind of warped and has quite a lot of ripples all over the place. But what about the things that we don't see? What about things like, for example, black holes, neutron stars, various types of gas, various types of relatively hard to detect particles, and everything else that makes a typical galaxy? Well, that is of course not as easily visible. As a matter of fact, none of this is simulated here or in any other media that we generally use to explain science or to explain the universe. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing one of the first maps, or I guess one of the first 3D images of essentially what the galaxy most likely looks like if we were to look at it imagining things that we don't see, or at least imagining things that we know exist but are just not visible. The remnants such as black holes or various types of neutron stars. That at least theoretically we believe should be all over the place, but we only have found a handful in the last few decades. And mostly because they are just impossible to see. We can only see them if they're absorbing a lot of mass from the partner and are then re-emitting this mass in, for example, X-rays, or if they're producing very unusual observational effects such as gravitational lensing effects, which are also extremely rare and relatively difficult to see. But theoretically, the scientists believe that there are millions, if not billions, of these objects out there, and they should also be considered to be part of the galaxy. And so to try to figure out what all of this looks like, the scientists ran a few models, a few simulations, made a few assumptions in regards to what happens to these objects once they're created from, for example, a typical supernova, and then mapped this, overlaying the typical picture of the Milky Way galaxy, producing the map of what the scientists referred to in their paper as a galactic underworld. The view of the galaxy where we sort of only see the objects that are unseen to us, neutron stars and black holes. The remnants of various supernova that happened over the past 13 billion years. And though in the past the scientists have discovered several neutron stars and black holes around the recent sites of various supernova, this represents only a tiny tiny number compared to the total that exists out there, with pretty much the vast majority of them now being almost completely invisible. And today we know that all of the stars out there at some point are going to transform into some kind of a remnant. The majority of them are just going to become some sort of a white dwarf. Basically, exactly what happens to our sun as well. And eventually these will turn into a black dwarf as they cool down over time, although in this case trillions of years. But stars that are at least 10 solar masses are going to explode, producing something else as a result. The ones that are less than 25 solar masses are going to end up as neutron stars. With vast majority being completely invisible to us, but some becoming pulsars or potentially some other unusual stars such as magnetars. The stars that are more than 25 solar masses are going to produce black holes and some of the most massive stars might actually leave nothing behind. They might go through something known as pair instability supernova, basically destroying themselves entirely. But things like white dwarf we can generally see and can also detect them from relatively far away distances. And also because white dwarfs don't experience supernova, they generally also stay in the same area of space. And if you were to remove every other star and just leave white dwarfs behind, it would produce a relatively similar shape, but obviously much much dimmer overall. But because neutron stars and black holes are formed from supernova, this also adds a bit of a kick to them, having them actually get displaced across the galaxy and thus creating a map that's very different from what we have in terms of regular stars. And so the scientists that produced this new model took all of this into consideration. So for example, they looked at the distribution of various stars in our galaxy right now, and also looked at some of the more massive stars in our galaxy, simulating where we can find most of them, and how most of them will end up changing their orbit over time. But they also took into consideration the fact that a typical supernova will give them a bit of a kick into a random direction, with some of these stars potentially reaching very high velocities. And because many of them might even be older than the majority of the stars in the galaxy, they might have actually traveled across the Milky Way for nearly 13 billion years. And so even though typical stars might resemble something like this, with each of the points representing some kind of a star-like object, the so-called galactic underworld would look entirely different. The distribution of these stars across the galactic plane creates something that's at least three times thicker than what's produced by the visible stars. If we were to colorize this, it would look something like this. 
here's what we think Milky Way might look like, although in this case it's kind of simplified, but here's what the galactic underworld looks like if you were to remove all of the stars, leaving only neutron stars and black holes behind. And more intriguingly, they discovered that at least a third of these stars possess velocities high enough to actually escape the galaxy, implying that a large proportion of all of these neutron stars and black holes is actually escaping the galaxy and at some point are going to end up completely by themselves traveling in the intergalactic space, which also means that many of them already are there and potentially create quite a lot of invisible mass between various galactic objects, for example between the Andromeda and the Milky Way. And this also implies that over time the Milky Way seems to be actually decreasing in mass, I guess in some sense you could call it evaporating. And though that's kind of expected of other objects, such as typical globular clusters or a lot of other star clusters that can over time lose their mass and a lot of the stars present here, mostly because of the gravitational interactions, nobody ever thought that it would be possible for the Milky Way itself to actually lose its mass in a similar way. And in this case it does seem to be pretty significant. I mean, we're talking about a third of all of these massive objects. Which of course, if confirmed by other studies, would actually present an interesting opportunity to study how galaxies lose mass over time and potentially explain some of the mysteries in regards to some observations that suggest that there is definitely some mass missing in various galaxies. So there's definitely a few mysteries to be solved here, assuming of course the simulations are correct. And another intriguing discovery in this case was the fact that many of these remnants seem to be distributed relatively equally across the galaxy, suggesting that pretty much most of the stars in the galaxy should actually have at least one of these remnants within at least a hundred light years away from the star. And that suggests that for our sun, the remnant should be within about 65 light years at the most, which means that it might actually even be closer. But because it would not be emitting any light or produce any energy whatsoever, it would be practically impossible to detect it at the moment. And so some of the upcoming observations from the Vera Rubin Observatory might actually help us find some of these objects and thus resolve some of these mysteries as well. This observatory is going to be the most powerful we have right now in being able to track various objects using gravitational lensing effects. Something that we usually use to detect various planets, but something that can also be used to obviously detect black holes as well. But I guess the biggest surprise here is just how different the shape is from what the galaxy looks like by looking at regular stars. This actually kind of reminds me of a typical elliptical galaxy compared to this galaxy like what we think Milky Way most likely is. With the overall increase in density as you move away from the disk mostly being created by the interaction with various objects but also because of these kicking effects from various supernova. And so that final moment before the object becomes a black hole or a neutron star definitively determines where it's going to spend the rest of its time as it travels the galaxy. As a matter of fact, in the past, at least 20 different hypervelocity stars have been discovered across the Milky Way and most of them are believed to have acquired their velocity because of various supernova. But the majority of the objects being kicked out are very likely neutron stars and not so much black holes. That's once again because of the total mass. A black hole is more likely to be a lot more massive and thus influenced a lot less by these supernova. Which of course suggests that after billions of years, the objects that are going to be mostly left in the galaxy are going to be black holes and of course various white dwarfs. But nearly 40% of neutron stars, because of that supernova kick, end up escaping the galaxy. Which of course suggests that the intergalactic space could actually be filled with various neutron stars flying all over the place. But because these supernova are so unpredictable and create what's known as asymmetric explosions or asymmetric kicks, could be in any direction, if you compare these pictures once again, you'll notice that even the galactic arms seem to disappear from this image. And so this right here could be what the future of the Milky Way will be like in the next 10 to 20 billion years. Assuming of course the universe survives that long. And that also of course means that when we look at various elliptical galaxies, such as for example the largest one known to us, the galaxy known as IC1101, what you're looking at here are mostly red dwarfs, a lot of white dwarfs, but also quite a lot of invisible black holes and very likely lots and lots of neutron stars escaping this galaxy. Once again, assuming that the study in this case is correct in the assumptions that were made to simulate this. But of course what all of this means for the future of the universe and the future of the Milky Way is not really known to us. I'm sure a lot of studies will try to investigate this in more detail and possibly even find some of these neutron stars as they escape the galaxy, but at least for now we know that if we one day discover some unusual emissions somewhere out there, somewhere where they shouldn't be happening, and if we actually find the effects coming from a distant pulsar, 
it might actually finally make sense if the study in this case is correct. But I guess until we discover more or until further studies, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. All of the relevant links are in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.